Hi everybody. Happy Easter. I hope you and your families have had and are having um, a happy and blessed Easter Sunday today. I wanted to get um, my week six introduction video done. It's done a little early. Uh, my son and my husband are outside playing and um, so I have about 10 minutes of quiet time here. Um, first, I wanted to apologize that I wasn't as active on the Flipgrid discussion this past week, you know, as I was in week four, and as I, I try to be in our discussion forums, it was my son's birthday on Thursday, he turned five, and with Easter then today, it was a quick turnaround, and um, I apologize, I did not have as much time to be as active as I like to in the discussion boards, but I want to congratulate and thank you all for um, the work that you're doing and the effort and the time and the commitment you all are putting in to really having engaged and quality discussions. Um, in week four and in this week, I really appreciate it. And I've really enjoyed um, listening and participating in the discussions. So if you can believe it, we are in week six and we are in the final two weeks of the course and this is the most fun part is because now is when you get to put everything you've learned into action so the next two weeks you'll be working on your inclusive classrooms project and this is your final project and it's the key assessment for the course and the idea behind the assignment is is that you come up with a project that in reality you could and do plan to implement at your school with the goal in helping um, improve the inclusivity at your school or to implement and apply something you've learned within the course um, at your school and so there's really far and wide directions where you can take this um, you know, I have had a variety of people in who have had a variety of positions here at the school, here in this class. I had an art teacher and her final project was to do a group um, community piece of art and she worked to involve students of all ages and ability levels and work to make it accessible so that everybody could participate within their own skill level and ability. That was her project that to totally fits the bill, totally appropriate. Um, I had other students who took units, um, you know, a certain unit that, uh, in their grade, and they revamped it to either include more differentiation or they revamped them into co-teaching lessons. So that's something a little bit more academic. I've had Spanish teachers, and they created a multicultural night at their school. Um, I've had, what were some other ones? Oh, um, one teacher worked to incorporate more accessibility into her classroom. And so she did a whole revamping of her classroom environment to include more flexible seating um, and more UDL um, components within her classroom environment. So what you have to decide as a teacher is, where do you see the need, either within your instruction, your classroom, your school, of where you could apply and improve something from the all these inclusive practices that we've learned about um, through these past five weeks? How could you take one of those ideas and apply it, apply it into a project or a plan or some way that you can improve something at your school. And this is really where Gannon, um, Gannon's program shines because we want you to become agents of change and we want you to take what you've learned to make a difference, to change something, to improve something within yourself or your practice or your school. And this is where my philosophies of, of leadership and education um, stem from. They stem from making change, creating change, finding a gap, finding that difference, and using your skills and abilities and your knowledge to close it and to, to make education better and different. 
So that is your challenge. Um, I have a presentation in week six that I prepare and I, um, I, I put out each week and it has to do with um, the best way to, to communicate your idea or your plan. And the reason I do this is because when I first started teaching this course, maybe five, six years ago, I was getting lots of newsletters. Like I was getting lots, lots of, I have this idea, um, I'm going to create a parent newsletter and I'm going to explain to parents all the different ways that I'm differentiating in the classroom. And that was their project. It's not bad, it's fine. But when we're talking about ways to communicate or ways to engage um, or get the word out about what you're doing, a newsletter really isn't always the best way. Um, part of the project is that you have to create some kind of artifact in addition to this paper that you are going to write to explain your project. And so I just encourage you when you're thinking of creating this artifact, you know, it could be, um, it could be some kind of newsletter or presentation or it could be um, you know, a flyer or I, there's a lot of, a lot of variety of things you could do. Um, when you're thinking about this project and how it's going to be presented and communicated, really think about, um, that face-to-face -face interaction and communication is, is, is best. Um, and watch the presentation to get a little bit more of where I'm coming from. So if you have any questions this week, please feel free to reach out. Um, you will post your ideas and there is a kind of like a planning guide that you'll complete and you'll post it to the discussion forum that's not due till Friday and then you'll give feedback to peers and that's due by Sunday and then you have all next week to work on your project and we do have a final reflection paper that's due at the end of week seven so this is a long overview and introduction I apologize um, but uh, I wanted to give you a little bit of some more information to go off of entering into the final two weeks. So thank you again, everybody. Take care. And um, I'll be seeing you on the discussion board by Friday. All right. Thanks.